Pepe. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> wow! I gotta tell you, Conan, I'm not too thrilled about going on after Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> It's I'm a sorry. spot I wouldn't give to a leopard. If anyone, <laughs> if anyone can handle it, you can. <laughs> well, you're very nice to say so. Thank you. Uh, how, how long have you been doing this? You've been singing since... I've been singing. Now, wait for it, folks. Fasten seatbelts. I've been singing professionally since I was four years old. Right. Four years old. And uh, you started out, actually, you were a drummer first, right? Well, I played drums since I was about seven or eight years old. Professionally, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you switched. You became a singer. No, actually, I did sing first. I sang with the old Coon Sanders band mm -hmm. at the Black Hawk restaurant in Chicago when I was four. Right. And that was the beginning of my career. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then you were in Chicago, and uh, you came. Uh, did you dream about one day coming to New York? Was that? Yeah, I always wanted to be a New York singer. You know, I used to listen to the radio in Chicago. And I would hear the tinkling of glasses in the various venues. I would hear people laughing, imagining New York, the sophistication of New York. And I always wanted to come here and kind of own this town. Uh-huh. That's great. And God has been very good to me. Yeah, you, you've described yourself as, uh, you know, the, the happiest man alive. I've... Absolutely. I, I really am. That's I'm true. the happiest guy alive. I'm not sure. Oh. And uh, when you... When you hit it, when you hit it big, uh, the, you had a lot of nicknames, of course. Because the most mm -hmm. common one, I know you were you're sick of it, but it was you were commonly known as the the Velvet Fog. The Velvet Fog. But you had some other ones too, which I didn't know about, which were. <laughs> yes, these were really wonderful. <laughs> one was Mr. Butterscotch. <laughs> you're ready for that? Uh, here's the here's the goodie. There was a disc jockey named Fred Robbins in town, who was very popular during the 30s and the 40s and the 50s. And he tagged me not only with the Velvet Fog, but, wait for it, the kid with the gauze in his jaws. I want that. <laughs> you got it. All right, all right. From now on, that is how I will be known on this show. Love it, love it. Uh, now, I, one thing that, that uh, I don't know if, if people realize, but you co-wrote uh, one of the most famous Christmas songs. Uh, was the Christmas song, really, for a lot of people. Well, you know, a lot of people don't, identify the Christmas song. When, when, when I do an interview and somebody says, well, tell me what you've written. I said, well, I, I wrote the Christmas song. And they go, uh-huh. What else have you written? Right. And I always have to go, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Now, uh, now, a song like that, a song like that just, uh, I mean, that's, that will be around forever. That will be around long after all of us are gone. That song will be out there. People will be singing it. Mm -hmm. And it's just fascinating. How does something like that happen? How does something like that get created? Well, uh, funnily enough, I was writing with a guy by the name of Bob Wells. We were a songwriting team. And what happened was I went out to his house one day. There was a spiral pad on his piano with the first four lines of that song written in pencil. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire, Jack Frost nipping at your nose, etc. So when he came into view, I said, Bob, what's this? He said, listen, I am so hot today. I jumped in the pool. I've done everything to cool off. I can't cool off. So I wrote those lines as an experiment to see if just looking at them and thinking right. about them would cool me off. I looked at him and said, this may be a song. Mm -hmm. And in 40 minutes, that song was written. That's amazing. That's great. 40 great minutes. Great story. Okay.